Hey, you keyword geeks. This video is about the Google AdWords tool, mainly, you know, some of the tips and tricks that you can do. I'll talk a little bit about the why as I go through this. This is probably the single the best keyword tool that is out there. I've used uh, Keyword Discovery, Word Tracker, Beebiz, oh, on and on. I've tried so many keyword tools, and this hands down is the best keyword tool. I think it's the best bang for your buck. Obviously, it's a free keyword tool. And let's get started. Let's start talking about why this is such a fantastic tool. So like all keyword tools, you simply enter your phrase into the input box. Now, one thing you'll see is I'm logged into AdWords. And I'm going to recommend that you get an AdWords account because when you get an AdWords account linked to the Google Keyword Tool, you're going to get up to 800 results back at a time. Normally, if you don't have an AdWords account, you're only going to get 100 results at a time. So you can get up to eight times as much data by having this. Uh, also, if you're not logged into AdWords, Google will sometimes just not show a lot of phrases. So I highly recommend that AdWords is free. Get yourself an AdWords account, and that way you can really enjoy the power of this tool. So let's get started here. As usual, we type in a keyword phrase. In this case, I'm going to type in Windows, and we're going to click Search. Sorry about that. We're going to type in Windows, and we're going to click Search. So now what we've got here is Google showing us back the results of, of our keyword that we searched. And we can see here some basic columns. We've got a competition column, um, monthly global searches, local searches, and local trends. Now, one great thing about this Google tool is the monthly searches reporting is very, very accurate. Google has 70% of the search market share, roughly. And so nobody knows the demand better than them. If you ever use Keyword Discovery or Word Tracker or any of those other bigger tools that are not based on the Google API, uh, you'll see that a lot of the demand figures look quite low, and I think that they do a poor job in reporting the actual demand. So that's one of the main, one of the great reasons that I really like this tool. There's another column that I like to slip in here, and we can click that by going here. And I'm going to add the estimated average cost per click. So now it's populated that column with that data. And we can see here now the estimated average cost per click. This gives us a sense of competition. We can see we got some phrases here, Windows $2.25 per click. That's an outrageous price for a very vague phrase. Problem with Windows is we don't know if it's coming from somebody searching for home improvement or whether it's for a, a searcher of Microsoft Windows or some sort of Microsoft product very difficult to understand what it is that they're searching for. So one thing we can do is filter some of this data. And we see here on the all category side here, we could do some things like consumer electronics. Now what this is going to do is bring us a lot more information about consumer electronics. So you can see there's a lot of mobile updates, a lot of mobile information, that sort of thing. Uh, we could also change that to, if I was more interested into the windows of a house, I could go home and garden, and now we're going to get the results for home and garden. So this is what Google is currently displaying for that. So that's a nice little filtering option that you can do is the all categories option there, and then picking a category within. And I can even go inside one of these, and it might not be enough data for a topic like windows, for example. Now if I searched a more popular phrase, such as golf or something like that, or oh, I don't know, carpet, it might run across many different places. So it really just depends on the keyword phrase. So that's a really important little trick that you can do with that. Now, the next option that I want to talk about is the contains function. And we can see that down here. It's going to scroll down to it. And we can see here, what we can do is use this as a means to clean up our data. So window film, for example, I guess that would relate to a housing window. Free download, that's obviously going to relate to Microsoft Windows. Now, if I just wanted to find out window information, I can start clicking some of these off. And, you know, license, that's probably a Microsoft thing. And I could just start clicking these things off here, saying I don't want this data because maybe I am looking for, like, house type windows. Oops, that came back. Uh, maybe I'm looking for house type of windows. So I'm going to start cleaning this up, media player, pack, password recovery, all this stuff. Uh, and so I can start cleaning this stuff up. Maybe I don't want photo galleries and pictures and whatnot. So what I can do is really start focusing and cleaning up this data. Now, currently this is set to broad match, as you can see here on the match types on the left side there. And we can see here that Microsoft Windows Home Server has 301,000 searches per month. Now, this is a little bit misleading because this is set to broad match. Now, what this means by broad match is that Windows, or sorry, Google is telling us that 301,000 people will be searching Windows Home Server or phrases related to that. So this is a bit of an inflated figure, and you don't want to be basing your intelligence off of this. Now, a much better option is to change this to something like phrase match, and we'll turn off the broad match, and let's see what happens to Windows Home Server. 
So now Windows Home Server, I guess, is, isn't even on the top 100 of the results. So it's now it's reshuffled the stuff based on causing a phrase match. So when, when we see a phrase match for, say, dedicated Windows Server, this is telling us Windows is, or sorry, Google again is saying that dedicated Windows Server with a word in front or a word behind or many words behind or in front uh, has 4,400 searches per month. This is a much better understanding of where the demand lies and how much they're actually, how much searching there actually is for it. We could set this to uh, exact match. I don't like exact match. I think it's a little bit too restrictive and perhaps uh, reports a little bit of a lower demand than there actually is. And that is because this tool is not going to give you every single phrase that people are searching for. They're just giving you the kind of the more popular stuff. So what I'm trying to do is by using phrase match is get an idea of demand of these core phrases that are in the phrase match and then we'll get these X additional demand for the phrases that lie in front or behind. So uh, my personal preference again is phrase match. So that's some of the cool stuff that you can do with this tool. Now let's also look at the advanced options here. We have uh, locations and languages. So typically when I'm doing searches, I search all countries, all languages. Google does a pretty darn good job of bringing me only English results. Now, if for some reason I wanted to do a search on say just uh, US customers or UK customers, I could certainly do that. If I, maybe I have a regional based business, a consulting type business or a brick and mortar type of service, I could find out what people are searching for from that country. People from the United Kingdom have different ways of spelling certain words as opposed to say like the United States. So. Again, if your product is sort of global reaching, we would set this to all countries. If your product is regional, then we would change it to one of these regions. Not many other keyword tools have this sort of regional functionality. Keyword Discovery has a little bit of a regional functionality, but not to the extent that this tool has. Uh, next option that we see is include adult ideas. I would never use this unless I was searching for adult type of phrases, so that really never happens. So I, I never use that function, but if you were into that business, you would want to be looking at that option. Uh, next option we see is mobile search. Mobile search will tell us the demand for cell phones, basically accessing certain searches. So we can, we can set that to mobile search and then research that. And we're going to see these numbers really plummet down because there's a lot more desktop searching than there is mobile devices searching. So now we can really see these numbers really falling down here. But if you had a large audience that was searching your site or you were interested in that mobile market, this is what you want to look at. The cell phones are obviously going to have a slightly different search type or search types than say uh, you know desktop. So, and then the next option that we see here is show results for all keyword ideas or ideas containing my search terms. Now right now I've got just Windows. So if I maybe went dedicated Windows, and we're going to click search. And so Google's going to return any phrases it thinks that are related to dedicated Windows. It doesn't necessarily have to have Windows in it. There's the results now. We can see SQL Server hosting has showed up. So Google thinks that's related to dedicated Windows. So when you're doing exploratory stuff, I like to leave the all keyword ideas on to get me the biggest uh, broad set of data and, and to help me understand what it is that I'm looking for. When I want to really narrow it down, I will do ideas containing my search terms. And what this is going to do is only give us phrases that contain dedicated and also contain Windows, as we can now see in the results. Now for you niche hunters out there, what we're going to do is take this filter keywords and we're going to say, give us any phrases that contain more than say 5,000 searches per month, 500, 5,000. And I also am going to add another criteria and that is I'm going to say I want to see estimated cost per click is less than say 50 cents. And this is particularly good for niche people because you can use this to understand where there's some decent demand, but yet some still some reasonable cost per click. I like looking at cost per click because cost per click, as I said, gives us an idea of the competition level. Where there's typically high PPC pricing, there's typically high SEO competition as well. So now we can see in the results here, we've got quite a few phrases that are being searched for that are under 50 cents. We can see a few there for 8 cents. Uh, you know, 27,000 at 8 cents, uh, that's pretty darn good. Maybe not the best phrase, for example, to be, you know, basing your niche market on, but nonetheless, a good example to show you how you can use this option to really drill down on that data. Typically, when I'm doing keyword research, I don't really enforce these options unless I was really looking for a niche type of thing. Uh, when I do re keyword research for a client, I take all of the phrases, and later on in other videos, I'm going to show you how I take all of this data, which I might get three, four, five thousand 5,000 phrases sometimes for a particular topic, and how we organize that. So please, look at my channel, subscribe to my channel, you'll see some other videos there on keyword research. And if you like this video, please leave me a comment and uh, give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And leave any comments in the comment box below if there's any questions you have about this video or any ideas you'd like to see for future videos, please drop me a line. Love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Have yourself a great day.